Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Future of BizTech. I'm your host, JC Granger. I have another fantastic guest with us on the show today. And listen, if you end up loving this episode, please show your love and appreciation. Go follow the podcast wherever you're listening to it. Show that love and give a five-star review and some nice comments, because that is how other techies like you and I find pretty cool podcasts like this, although I am a little biased. But today, I have the absolute uh, pleasure of interviewing Brett Martin, the founder and president of Kumo Space. Brett, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Tell the audience a little bit about yourself and uh, what is that Kumo Space does. JC, thank you so much for having me. Excited to be here. Excited to get to connect with your audience. Uh, so Kumo Space builds virtual offices uh, where teams show up to remote and distribute teams. They show up to work every day. So what that means is, is basically, you know, instead of sitting your... Uh, apartment alone working from home on zoom wondering what the rest of your team is doing in kumo space you sign in uh, in my office uh, we have 30 people they start trickling in around 10 a.m and then you can see throughout the day your whole team working having different conversations giving presentations having external meetings you can just tap people on the shoulder if you need some help getting unblocked you can play a game of uh, chess if you need a little time to unwind uh, just just like a real office it's a place to connect and get work done yeah, see, now, it, it, so the audience, you guys can't see this right now, but it's something you really have to see. This is probably one of the more unique softwares I've experienced in a long time. And, I, and, and it's my job to know these things. Like, So I, I, I go through a lot. Kumo Space is really cool. Um, it it kind of reminded me almost of like playing like an old school Nintendo game, like Zelda. Remember Zelda? Like, I mean, man, we are aging ourselves, aren't we? Okay, for all of you <laughs> not boomer or <laughs> gen z or gen x or whatever people listening uh it's it, you know these 2d kind of video style games where you're kind of navigating around this you know uh top down view kind of you know board right and i thought that was really interesting of yours and i remember when i was when i was scrolling through it it was like there was a conference room over here to the left and then uh i could have there was other meeting rooms it was like a coffee area but like i can kind of move my little avatar essentially where I want it, and there'd be other people there. Can, I mean, talk like how did you come up with this idea? And then how are how have people? And let's talk about your company. How have people um, responded to it? Because it's such a unique play on this remote work, but somehow quote unquote in an office idea. A hundred percent. I mean, some people might say Kumo Space is uh, video chat meets video games, and you know, like you said. Uh, you know, you video is your avatar. So you're not a cartoon. You are you are yourself, but you are in an office, uh, but it's it's virtual. And so, you know, you can close the door to your office, have a private conversation with someone or you can, you know, wander around and have an all hands meeting and, and see everyone there at the same time. Um, we came up with it. It's a pandemic baby. Uh, I, you know, run my other job is I run Charge Ventures. It's a New York based pre-seed venture capital fund. We used to throw a um, monthly networking event and I would get all of the uh, old parts like uh, myself who, and we would come together, have some wine, cheese, share deals. And uh, when the pandemic hit, uh, people said, well, you know, you should bring that online. And I said, well, I don't really want to give a Zoom PowerPoint presentation to 50 of my friends every month. There's not really a good video ch you know, chat platform to have, you know, multiple conversations in the same virtual place at the same time. And uh, I shared that with my co-founder, uh, Yang Mao, who's an old friend of mine. We built three companies together. And two weeks later, he came back with the prototype. And we were like, wow, there, there's something here. So that, that's, a, that's the origin story. And um, people do use it for tons of things. You know, we focus on the virtual office use case. Uh, our users use it six hours a day. We have um, you know, tens of thousands of teams in there, millions of users, but people do use it for other things. We've had weddings in Kumo Space. We've had funerals in Kumo Space. Uh, we've had graduations in, in Kumo Space. And so you know, the platform's used for a lot of things. Uh, however, we focus on the office use case. So how, how customizable is it, right? Like, I, again, I know it's hard for people to kind of see it. So in, in using your most graphic terms, essentially, how can someone make Kumo Space their own space? What are the options they have? And um, and and how how do they sell that to as a transition for their people? Well, so that's like if you think about the core problems that Kuma Space solves, right? It, it's three things. It's we solve connection, and you know the problem is isolation and miscommunication. We solve collaboration, right? The ability to get aligned and work. 
And then we also solve sort of visibility and support, the ability to know where your team is and be able to help them and provide support and get support when, when, you, when you need it. Um, and so, you know, it's a different way of working. Like people are, you know, it's, it's actually a lot of the same things that people are used to in the office. So, you know, it's actually like, we've done remote work, we use Zoom and Slack, we got a lot done, but we know something's missing, right? We were, you know, building, we were sort of draining down social equity that we've created from years. You particularly saw that in um, first time, you know, young employees, right? Young employees were really left out the dry. They're kind of like stunted a couple of years because they haven't learned, um, you know, social skills, they haven't learned learned the soft skills of collaborating people. They've been sitting at their desk by themselves. And so we saw the cracks emerging and, you know, we're trying to show people, hey, there's a new way of working, right? You don't have to commute. You don't have to pay tens, you know, millions of dollars for expensive rent, but you still can get that same connection, that same human interaction, that same collaboration, and that same, you know, ability to like know awareness and presence around your team. You just do it virtually instead of in a physical office. So it's a new way of working, but uh, we think it's pretty effective. And so do some of our customers. So you said it's not an avatar, you said it's a video. So am I to understand that, let's say the little square that is you is not just a static picture, but a live feed from your cam? Is it almost like you're like almost like you're constantly in some sort of web meeting? Is that how it works? Yeah. So, you know, Zoom is like episodic. It's for scheduled meetings, right? Like we've had this meeting scheduled on the calendar for a month. We emailed about it. We set a time. We maybe used Calendly set aside an hour. Um, Kumo space is persistent. It's always on. It's like Slack in that sense. And it's for just the way work works in an office. It's it's ad hoc, right? You tap someone on the shoulder. You say, hey, check this out. What do you think about this? Or, hey, I need some help on this. Or, oh, I just kind of listen in on a meeting if I want to, or drop in and say, hey, marketing team, this is engineering here. Just want to let you know those things you asked for last week. They're going to be done on Tuesdays that work. Yes. Okay, cool. I'm out. I don't have to spend 20 minutes scheduling. I don't have to sit there and stare at you for an hour if I don't need to. I can get the, you know, I increase iteration speed. I actually have less, less meeting. Um, and so, you know, you can have your video on, you can have your video off, both, both work for us, uh, you know, but the idea is that it's more persistent. It's always on. It's synchronous interactions. It's lower friction and it's self-expression. Um, you know, like in a Zoom, I see you got a really nice background. You got some whiteboards. This looks like it's a picture, you know, of your office that, you know, you're working in front of. Um, you try to add a little character here, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're trying to do the same thing, except for it's fully customizable. So in, if you came to our Kumo Space office, uh, I'm a big surfer. I'm in Costa Rica right now. Um, in my virtual office, I've got stand, I've got ocean, I've got a beach chair, I've got a beach umbrella and the sound of ocean waves. And that's kind of my way of bringing a little of my personality. Uh, people mess with me. They're always bringing in uh, penguins and ghosts and bats and things into my office. And, you know, I don't know who left them. It's kind of like putting a whoopee cushion in someone's chair. Um, other people have, uh, you know, DJ booth or, uh, you know, a castle or they kind of make their office their own. And it's a way of showing off your personality because that's a big part of building culture is letting people express themselves and also kind of assimilate to, a you know, a broader company culture. Sure. Yeah, so I can definitely see how the, the culture part comes in here. And that's that's something that's really hard for companies right now to kind of assimilate with when they have um, a remote, because there's no such thing as remote culture, technically speaking. I feel, I feel like you kind of try to solve that problem, which is interesting. Um, what about, so that culture part we, we get, what about from, let's say, a more corporate bottom line standpoint where they say, let's say accountability, do you find, and are there any stats you have or just feedback where companies, do you feel like they're getting, that they're, that the remote workers are more accountable? And, and here's why I'm framing this question this way. Obviously with all the, with, with Elon Musk, for example, taking over Twitter, his big thing, he's a big proponent and very on one extreme end of the get back in the office, practically live there, full accountability, things like that. And again, regardless of where anyone falls on that opinion, isn't really the question as much as since it's in people's minds, especially in, in larger corporations, they want to be able to attract better talent by allowing remote. 
but they also understand that there's a certain level of accountability and um, and work ethic that goes with being a little more present in real time. Yours, your system, which I find very interesting, could be a hybrid that allows that. But my question is, how? What kind of feedback or what kind of stats have you come across that have has it helped any accountability for the companies that have used it when they're coming from that standpoint of like we got to make sure people are really working? I mean, it's funny you're framing this very diplomatically, uh, and uh, I kind of, I'm riding the fence a little bit on. I, I, I really appreciate opinion. that. We could talk about we could talk about return to office or work from home. Uh, yeah. You know, we say work from anywhere. I mean, fundamentally, we believe that anything that can be done over the internet will be done over the internet, and started with websites, then we started selling things over the internet and doing e-commerce. Now you can buy a car or a house over the internet. You can get married over the internet. You can sign contracts, right? And so we think a lot of desk work ultimately is going to be done over the internet. We don't see any reason not to. For all the advantages you just described, it's cheaper. You get talent from all over the world. You don't have to commute for multiple hours a day. Does that mean that we don't think that some FaceTime or in-person interaction is valuable? Of course it is. We have quarterly offsites build relationships, close deals. There's great reasons to be in person sometimes. But I think the way we had it before was was flipped, right? People were saying, oh, you're in the office five days a week and then you have one week of vacation. We're like, no, we think, you know, you're mostly remote doing work and then you are on special occasions, you come together in person. So I think a lot of the return to office stuff is honestly anxiety about managers who don't know how to manage remotely, don't know the right tools to do it. And people that have really expensive offices uh, <laughs> that, you know, want to find some use for them. And it's an excuse for if you want to cut 90% of your headcount, oh, saying you have to come back to the office is a great way to scare people away. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. So, so let me ask. So, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, no, after you, after you. Well, I was, I was a switch topic. So if you're, if you're still continuing on that, then, then I want to hear it. Oh, yeah. I just, you know, and so what I think is that, to your point, you can have the, what people love, what people truly care about is flexibility, right? People love flexibility. They want to be able to get their work done and live their life, whether that's living in Costa Rica and surfing every morning, or it's actually just spending some more time with their kids, right? And so, you know, we've shown that remote work is incredibly productive, but what's missing is all that software stuff. It is the visibility, knowing where your team is, knowing what they're working on, not just to keep track on them, but also so that you can help them. If you see they need help, you can get in there. You can mentor younger people. If you see someone doing something wrong, you can stop them halfway through and say, hey, wait, this is actually how to do it. You don't have to wait till the end of month you know, to manage by outputs. You can actually get in there and help them up front. And so we think that you can get most of those benefits in a hybrid virtual situation, uh, you know, and at a tenth of the cost. That's awesome. Yeah. Like I said, I, I got to play around with it before and it was, it was pretty interesting. In fact, I think now that I've had this conversation, I'll probably go and play with a little bit more after this, but um, how are you getting the word out there for it? I mean, I'm a marketing guy by trade. So what kind of marketing, I mean, you're doing PR, right? I, we know that you're on this show. You said you have another one later. So you got the PR part down. Um, what about um, digital marketing of any kind? What are you guys investing a lot into content or paid ads or outbound or inbound? I mean, just what is it that helps drive that engine for, for awareness? Yeah, I mean, we're pretty lucky in the sense that we have a viral product. Like you have to, you know, you, there's no single player mode in Kumo space. It is for connecting with yeah. other people. You could, you could create a virtual castle for yourself, but it wouldn't be very interesting. Um, <laughs> so people are inviting Kumo space, you know, bringing in their friends. If they get value out of it, they share it. So that we're lucky in that sense. I think the second place where we get the word out is, you know, content, marketing. People are like trying to figure out, this is not a big problem, right? Everyone's trying to figure out remote work. Everyone's trying to figure out how to manage remote teams, how to keep up morale, how to build culture, how to instill accountability for teams that are distributed all over the world, right? And so we've spent a lot of time putting together our thought. You know, we have the, we're fortunate to have the experience of working with, you know, thousands of remote teams learning their best practices, you know, bringing them together, distilling them, and then sharing them with the product community. So, you know, you check out our blog, we got a lot of great stuff there about how to run a remote team. Um, and then finally, you know, it's about 
finding the influencers, you know, like yourself who have an audience who people respect and trust and look to for answers and, and get in touch with you. And, you know, hopefully you see the value in the product and share it with your flock. That's not a bad strategy. That, that's good. <laughs> um, let's talk. And again, I don't, I don't want to focus on specific price points. The reason being is, you know, this, this podcast can age. You could come up with a whole thing later. Someone's listening to it a year from now. We don't, we don't want to be locked in, but my question is, do you have price points that are for small, like five person businesses, or is this more enterprise level where it usually only works for, you know, a hundred and above, where do you guys typically fall when it comes to who you're going after? Like, who's your perfect client for this? Yeah. I mean, look, our sort of perfect client are, you know, series C, A, B, C companies that are, you know, they want to grow fast. They know that they need to collaborate in real time. Their things are changing. They, you know, they're not just like a big company that's trying to offshore and put someone in a box and have them as cog in the wheel. No, like you need synchronous communication when to to connect and move quickly and deal with ambiguity and changes, right? So small, you know, medium-sized, fast-growing startups. That's a, that's our bread and butter. Um, people that run you know, contact centers though, that are people that are digital agency marketing. You know, if you run a digital agency, you got a lot of new clients, you got to get aligned around a new project really quickly. And anything like that works really well. Um, and yeah, I mean, th those are that like anyone that's trying to run and move fast and while running a remote team, that that's our ideal customer. Do you, do you typically charge like per seat or do you charge like per company? Is like a flat monthly rate? Oh, saying? yeah. In terms of pricing, you know, it's just, it's $10 per month per seat, $8 if you, you know, book annually. It's not expensive for the gift of an office if you compare it to, a, you know, a physical <laughs> office. And, you know, you can replace your Zoom, you can replace your Google Meets, and, you know, someday you're going to be able to replace your Slack. So we think it's going to be, you know, a ton of value, uh, you know, for folks. And we have teams as small as five using it. You can actually sign up, get your office for free. Uh, you know, you can get the free version, have 10 people in there, no problem. And, uh, you know, we're happy if you have a larger team, you can set it up yourself or we're happy to help you move in and customize it uh, for your company. Well, that's cool. Okay. Well, you did mention about like in the future, it might replace Slack for someone. So let's talk about the future, right? Future biz tech. So let's, we'll start actually, I'm going to go on that note. I usually ask about the big picture for the industry, but I'm going to ask about your company first, since you're going that direction, do you have a roadmap? I mean, for this plan of having more of a, like, again, like replacing Slack or an internal communication that has the same familiarity or ease of use as Slack. And if so, how far out is that for you guys? Look, Slack is an amazing product. We use Slack, uh, but we don't think it's the future. We don't think it's the end state of work, right? Like we don't think being a little green dot, you know, is the future. Like that's a bleak future. If Zoom and <laughs> Slack are the future of remote work and everyone's just sitting in their box, completely unaware of whatever anyone else is doing. And the best thing you can do is a custom, you know, a custom uh, emoji comment. That's the best way you can express yourself. Like that's a bleak future for humanity uh, and, you know, desk workers. Um, so we, we think that, you know, we can give people a place to connect and express themselves uh, to their coworkers and build real, real relationships and, you know, have more authentic human connection. Um, we're just at the start of that. You know, at the beginning, it's just making it work, making the video consistent and reliable, making it so you can customize your office, making it so it's easy to share links. You know, it, I built three companies. I know that it's not the fancy stuff. It's the little stuff that just making it work. Um, and, the details, and so yeah. exactly the details. And so make it easy to, you know, be in Kumo space. Our users are actually in there six plus hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. So make it easier, make that so they have a desktop app, get them, a, get them a nice mobile app, right? Like make it work across platforms. So, you know, simple stuff, but done right. Make it integrate with your calendar. I mean, there's, you know, it's not rocket science. Uh, we like to think of, we want Kumo Space to be this thing you turn on the beginning of your day. And then it's like a little conveyor belt. It just 
pings you when you need to be in this meeting. It's like having an assistant right at your office. And yeah. it's like, you know, hey, JC, need you in the marketing meeting now. Hey, five minutes from now, like, let's walk you over to the engineering meeting. That, that's, that's how we envision the future of, of our product. Awesome. All right, now let's talk about the future of the industry. Um, I got to tell you, I haven't heard of any other <laughs> companies that are like yours. Do you have competitors out there? And if, if not, do you have ones that maybe could swoop in fast and you know where do you kind of just see the next five to ten years of this we already talked about how you know if, if the future was zoom and slack would be pretty bleak so let's talk about everyone's remote future you know you plus your competitors i'm just curious is there anyone out there like you and uh whether it is or if there are or not you know where do you see the industry as a whole going look i think during the pandemic there was a, a bunch of companies that were kind of experimenting with this idea of like they call it spatial audio, kind of video spaces. Um, a lot of those were kind of proof of concepts, didn't really go anywhere or you know take take off. Um, but that said, you know, the future of remote work is the future of work. So it's obviously a big market, and you know, some of the big Silicon Valley VCs, you know, we have Lightspeed invested in us, that, you know, are placing bets because the the TAM, the, the total addressable market, is just so big. You know, if everyone's spending, we people are actually spending tens of millions of hours in Kubo space every month. Um, and so, you know, VCs hear numbers like that and they say, okay, you know, there's something valuable to be built here. So um, there's definitely going to be competition, whether it's from Slack or from Zoom or from other, other startups. But the lucky part is that there's so, it's such a big space that we just think about making our customers happy you know, doing a good job. And then if we do a good job for them, they'll send us more customers. Like it, it's, it's such a big TAM. We don't really have to think about competition too much. All right. I want to ask a personal question now. Um, I mean, you obviously had a, a pretty cool professional uh -oh. experience in life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to know, like, you know, you, you said you started three companies and whatnot and you, you, you've got the VC fund, you've, you've got Kumo space. You're obviously a very creative person. My question is when, like, when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? And is this, is this it? And if not, like, how did it get here? Yeah, you know, I have sort of got bit by the entrepreneurship bug uh, pretty early. I was selling seashells by the seashore um, <laughs> when I was a kid and, and had a little money box. And, you know, uh, that ended. Uh, I was I eventually at some point got my sister on payroll and I was paying my younger sister hourly and then <laughs> taking the profits that my parents sort of came in and regulated that business out and sort of made it a profit share, which, you know, to this day, I still feel guilty about. My sister's one of the kindest people I know. Um, so I've always been entrepreneur, you know, interested in entrepreneurship, won the business plan competition at, at college. And so uh, I just can't think of any other way of doing it. Like, the freedom to be running my own companies while in Costa Rica and surfing in the morning. I just, I, I can't think of anything, anything better. So, and that's, and that's, you know, that's actually a big part of the driving ethos behind Kumo space is like this idea that you can live your best life. You can, you can be productive in work. You can have connections with your coworkers. You can do really collaborative and creative things. And then you can also have your free time. You can work from anywhere you know, you can spend more time with your kids, you can, you know, travel the world, like, and that is like, I don't know, that's my personal goal in life, is to have my cake and eat it too, and, you know, I think Kumo Space is really just an extension of, you know, that, it's like me and Yang trying to productize that idea and share with the world as a, as a product. That's awesome, hey, that, that is the dream, right, I mean, that, who, who, who could argue with that being able to have the, the freedom is really where it's at more than, than anything, right? You know, the, the money can come and go, but if you got the freedom uh, of movement and experience, um, that's really what really what helps make life uh, really fulfilling. So that I agree with. So uh, to wrap up here, Brett, how can, how can people for one find Kumo space, right? And then also how can they reach out to you in, specifically if maybe it's a big company listening and they, they have a, a big deal they want to talk about? Yeah, so it's we're just Kumo Space, K U M O S P A C E dot com. Uh, you can come and check it out. Grab your office, set it up for totally for free. Uh, and uh, you know, if you want to get in touch, uh, you know, feel free to ping me. I'm on Twitter, Brett 
B-R-E-T-T-1211. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, just mention uh, this podcast and, you know, I would love to, you know, if you talk about the future of biz tech, I would love to connect with you. Awesome. And listen, for everyone listening out there, again, if you liked what you heard today, be sure to subscribe to the podcast, give it that five-star rating we talked about, write some cool comments behind it so other techies like us can find it and enjoy learning about all these amazing and helpful B2B softwares on the market today. Brett, thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And uh, I'll talk to you soon hereafter as well. Absolute pleasure, JC. Thanks for having me and best of best.